Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny just launched in theaters the other day. Some people think it sucks but Some people think it's a masterpiece. Well, I'm going to tell you what I really think about the Indiana Jones film. So sit back and relax. Enjoy the video. I am Scotty Chi. Here we go. Warning. Spoilers ahead. Now, I'm not going to do like a full movie, movie review because I can sit here for freaking hours and talk about the movie, you know, try to get into detail as much as I can. But no, but my, I'm just going to give you my, like, my honest opinion, you know. I thought the movie was okay. I thought it wasn't, um, I thought it wasn't amazing. I, you know, I think it could have been a little bit better. I think, I, I personally, I wouldn't have cared if the movie never, was never made, to be honest with you. And, and, and I'm saying that in respect. I think... You know, obviously with Disney, uh, Lucasfilm, basically, you know, they just want to, you know, revamp old franchises. A lot of people could say, oh, they're just ruining franchises. I wouldn't say this franchise is ruined, per se. I would say uh, it's, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of hard to say. It is kind of hard to say. I mean, I like, like I said, I wouldn't say this movie... Uh, killed like Indiana Jones per se. No, it didn't whatsoever. I mean, you know, spoiler ahead, Indiana Jones does not die in this film. Just want to let you guys know that. But, you know, it did show uh, him kind of weaker a little bit. I mean, there were moments where, you know, Indy was Indy again. You know, he was doing some cool badass uh, um, action stunt, whatever the fuck. Uh, but he was kind of held back from, uh, you know, I hate to say it, uh, you know, Phoebe Waller Bridge's character, Helena. And to me, Helena seemed kind of uh, annoying. Um, I mean, obviously, she's very overconfident, which is fine. You know, I think a lot of uh, characters, you know, can I mean, Indiana Jones is a confident character as well, too. But we kind of basically knew his backstory, uh, e even in the first movie. I mean, we all we all knew who, what he did, who, who he was. You know, he not only was a uh, treasure hunter, grave robber adventurer but, uh, but he was still a uh, slick conniving fuck <laughs> of course love e and d but then you know we really don't know much about this about helena you know basically you know basically she had to be put in her place several times by by indy you know for being a little too overconfident a little too uh i guess you could say trying to take try to take the initiative you know, and obviously she was demeaning uh, in, in Indiana Jones's character as like, oh, you know, you're old, you're old, and like no one cares about you. You're just you, you're just speaking out, you're just speaking out your ass. And he's just like, all right, you little shit, you're listening to me here, gotcha. <laughs> but but also, what I really didn't like about the character Helena was that she, you know, wanted. Uh, money and fame and fortune for um, the dial. Basically, she wanted to uh, take the dial and uh, basically just take take the money and run. I know she had legal troubles with some. Um, I can't remember exactly who it was in the film, but it, it's to me it seemed like a like a like a Muslim prince or something like that. I don't know, like like Nazim or something. I can't. Don't worry about that. But you know, but Indiana Jones. He was always the kind of guy that really didn't care about, um, you know, money other than, uh, you know, what you call it in Temple of Doom when he did uh, want to seek the Shankara Stones for a fortune and glory, kid. Fortune and glory. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, most of the time he uh, respected art artifacts as something that people should see, should view, you know, should study, should uh, appreciate. That's why he always say he always says in a lot of his films that belongs in a museum. It belongs in a museum. Uh, but yeah, so to me, I think Helena. I mean, obviously, yeah. I mean, it's Disney. It's you know, it's this new era of Disney where they want to make like a strong female character, which is fine. I mean, you know, Indiana Jones has had some strong female characters before. I thought fucking Marion was a very strong is a very strong um, female character, even though she's more of like a, she was like still like a damsel in distress, but she didn't she she didn't take shit from anybody. Uh, and even in Kingdom of the Crystal Skull with uh, the main uh, pro, uh, antagonist, uh, Irina Spalko, she was, uh, you know, a badass woman. She kicked the crap out of uh, Indy and his son multiple times <laughs> on, on occasion, you know. So to me, I think um, if they would have written the character Helena, calmed her down a little bit, you know, made her, you know, made her strong, but also made her not 
as cocky. I think Helena would have been a good character. And not as sociopathic as well, too. I mean, like, she was basically laughing at the fact whenever uh, Indiana Jones is talking about his, his buddy getting killed on that boat. And, uh... Mads Mikkelsen though was uh, was a pretty good, uh, pretty damn good in the film as well. He reminded me of uh, one of the the first villains in the Indiana Jones franchise. What the hell is his name? Arnold Tult. Uh, yeah, played by Ronald Lacey. Yeah, he could, he did remind me a lot of him, especially with the glasses he wore, the very soft spoken kind of nature he spoke. You know, almost kind of like that. Yeah, basically like that. Uh, but he also kind of reminded me of Heimlich Himmler as well too. Uh, basically, um, uh, Mads Mikkelsen's role was, you know, obviously he's obsessed with the dial. He wanted to go back to, uh, 1939 to basically take over uh, the war and, you know, have, basically have him become Mein Führer, <laughs> of course. Uh, but then, uh, he, he doesn't realize that, oh, I, I messed up. This isn't gonna work. Then they go back to freaking the Roman Empire area, era like 216 BC during the siege of Syracuse. I thought that was actually really cool, right there. You know, it's yeah, you know, because they displayed at the tomb of Archimedes, where it's like, oh, they had the tomb where it was two dragons with uh, propellers on them, and then Archimedes had a watch around his wrist. And people thought, oh, he probably went forward in time to receive to retrieve that watch with the dial. But actually, it was Indiana Jones and the Germans who went back in time. It was still them the entire time. I thought that was actually pretty brilliant right there. And I, yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. Good job, Disney. But I thought it was really cool that they brought back Sala. I thought it was really cool they brought back Marion as well. I wish they would have brought back uh, Short Round as well, too. And th that's where I want to get into the discussion right there with the, the character Teddy, who was uh, Helena's accomplice. I think that should have been Short Round. That's my opinion right there. I think maybe that they should have like somehow written a short, you know, short round and, and Helena somehow, you know, met when because, you know, Helena was an archaeologist. She's a you know, pretending to be an archaeologist as well. I'm sure short round probably did a lot of archaeology as well, too. So I could I, it would have been really cool if those two were actually teamed up together. Short round would have been like Dr. Jones. I'm not trying to be racist or anything. <laughs> but, uh, and then, you know, Indy would have been like, wow, well, good to see you there, Shorty. And uh, yeah, I think that would have been a very good idea uh for james mangold and the writers for uh, indiana jones to uh incorporate that right there because to me that the character teddy was just i don't know just some dumb kid who was just like it's like oh i'm just here i'm just gonna pickpocket you i mean yeah sure okay they, they kind of made him like short round because short round was like a pickpocketer but short round was like cool he was like badass this kid was like you know kind of fearful for a lot of things even though he did you know kind of redeem himself with uh flying that airplane but that's really all he did he just flew the airplane and uh, brought them back to the brought them back to the to the present but yeah i think that character should have been rewritten for uh short round for sure and i will i will stand by that uh, and, and I'm not gonna lie, I didn't think the actor was that good at acting. Sorry, Disney. Sorry, YouTube. That's just my opinion right there. You know, if you want to make a good movie, gotta have some good acting in it. So, my honest rating for uh, Indiana Jones and the Doll of Destiny, I'll give it like a 3 out of 5. A 3.5 out of 5, you know? It wasn't incredible, It, but it was good. It wasn't, you know... Not definitely not as good as Raiders. Definitely not as good as Last Crusade. Um, I would say maybe I would say it on ties with Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Even though Kingdom of the Crystal, I mean, it was good, kind of. Um, I mean, I thought the CGI in Kingdom of the Crystal Skull was pretty ass. I um, mean, you know, the CGI in this one wasn't too bad either. But yeah, I'll definitely get it like a three point five out of five. Um. Like I said, I wish they they could have done a little bit more, but you know, hey, I'm I'm not in charge. Nothing more I can do. But I know uh, Disney's talking about wanting to do like a uh, Hell in a spinoff series. Um, two words, no, three words. Don't do it, please. <laughs> well, technically four. Don't do it, please. <laughs> Just don't do it. But anyway, what did, you, what did you guys think of the film? Did you guys think it was good? Did, did you think it was worth seeing? Let me know in the comments down below. Uh, give me a like. Give me a share. Freaking dislike if you want, you know, call me Mr. Beast, as always, you guys do, but I'm more than that. I'm here to, I don't know, entertain as best as I can. You guys have a great day, and happy 4th of July.